Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hopefully you're all having a great day today. Hopefully you can hear me. It's pouring down rain on this beautiful morning here in Mississippi. And I've got a fun little quick project to knock out hopefully this morning. And that is a set of stairs for our cat. We have a 12 year old cat who has really shown me signs of decreased mobility. So her normal one very confident leap up to where her food platform is, we keep her food elevated from the dogs, uh, has turned into two very hesitant leaps. So I want to make a set of stairs to go behind a chair in a very specific spot in my living room uh, for the cat to climb up. So for the stringer, I'm using a piece of walnut. We have kind of brown chocolatey colored walls in our living room and this will not necessarily blend, but I think it'll be a good fit to, uh, to use as the stringer. And for a little bit increased visibility to see the platforms or the stair treads as she walks up, I'm gonna use white oak. I got all of my pieces cut and I completely forgot about the top shelf. The top platform, not shelf, platform is going to be a little bit larger. And how large? I don't even know. This board looks like it's going to work and that's the size that I'm going to go with. It's one of those projects where dimensions aren't too critical. Other than getting up to the correct elevation, everything else is just open for interpretation. So this top platform is going to be whatever size this is. All of these stair treads are ready to have the dados cut for the joinery, and then after that we'll do a round over on all four of these. Should we go all four or just the front? Hmm. I'm not sure yet, but we'll find out uh, when I get to that stage. The walnut is the final width, which is 8 inches, 3 quarter inches thick, but it's too long at this stage, and that's because I have to cut out the, the stair shape, the stringer. And for that, I went ahead and put together a little... CAD drawing just to get all my, ang my, my measurements figured out. Uh, this is a lot of repetition with different angles, so I'm going to go ahead and mark it out right here with a speed square mainly because it's a 4 inch rise, 4 inch run, so it's a, it's a 45 degree angle. So I can use a speed square to speed things up, speed square, speed things up, there you go. Uh, and then we'll actually use that as an edge guide with a jigsaw to cut all this. This line right here is the floor. This is my first rise. My first run, second rise, run, rise, run, and so on, up the stairs. Now, my distance from here to here, from the point to the back side of the stringer, is 8 inches. And I thought that would be appropriate, but this is for a 5-pound cat. This is going to look way too bulky, in my opinion, for the, this much space to be behind here. So I think before I cut up this angle with a jigsaw, I think I'm going to go back to the table saw and really only leave about an inch and a half between this vertex right here with the rise and run of this point uh, to this side over here. So I'm going to cut a big chunk of this off.
final step before assembly is to add a like a one eighth of an inch radius to all these edges just to break them up. But before I do that, I want to add a radius to these corners. Several different ways to do that. Trace something with a pencil, sand it down, shape it however you want. But one of the fastest ways is to use a radius jig and a flush trim bit in the router table, which is what we're going to do here. So this is one of those radius jigs and actually they have, there's a bunch of different uh, radiuses to choose from here. Each one of these corners has a different radius. And I've got three different plates, so between these three, that's 12 different radiuses to choose from. I'm going to go with a one inch radius. This blue piece clips into place with the radius that you want right in the center. If you go to the back side, you have some grippy material to hold onto your workpiece, but you also have some tabs on either direction. So those tabs will stop the material in either direction, allowing you to, to put it into the corner so that the jig straddles the corner of your material. Then you can use a flush trim bit on the jig to transfer the radius of the jig onto the material perfectly every time. No guesswork involved. The only thing to take into consideration is you want to route downhill. This is wood grain that is going in this direction with the end grain over here. So picture this wood grain as a bunch of straws. You have a whole bundle of straws with the ends up here. If I rake my hand this way, we know that it'll just just slide over the top of those straws. But if I push my hand this direction, it's gonna snag those straws, the end, of the, end of the end of those straws, and bend them over. The same thing's gonna happen with wood grain on the end grain here. If I come in like so, it's gonna grab that, that material, the, the end of the straws, the end of grain, and break it off. You're gonna, get, you're gonna get a bunch of tear out. So you wanna go in the downhill direction to make a nice smooth cut. So what we're gonna do is cut this one, skip this one, spin it around, cut this one downhill, skip this one, spin it around, and now we can cut downhill and then downhill once again. So it's a little bit of an order of operations. For a finish, I went with just basic sprayed shellac and let it dry overnight. There's, there's nothing fancy that's necessary for this project as far as the finish goes. I don't need to go with any more protection than this. It's simply here to serve a purpose of letting the cat go up and down uh, in less pain um, with, without having to jump so much. So, uh, will she use it? Yes, I know for sure she will use it because I'm currently using a piece of half inch pine CD plywood to test out the concept and uh, she uses it just fine. So um, I'm excited to get that piece of half inch pine CD plywood out of my living room. Actually, let me rephrase that. My wife <laughs> is excited to get that piece of plywood out of the living room and put this one there in its place. Uh, thank you to Rockler Woodworking and Hardware for supporting this video. I'll have links down in the description below where you can check out some of the tools that I use to make this. And if you're just generally in a uh, need, or if you have a general need to purchase a tool, consider checking out Rockler. I think that's it for this project. There's really not much to say. It was just a quick win one day build. 
If you want to stay up to date with everything that I publish, go to my website, jacecustomcreations.com slash newsletter and sign up for my email newsletter. I'm going to quit talking and show you some, I guess, some cell phone footage of the cat actually going up and down it because uh, I doubt I could get her to do it right now when I'm shooting this outro. You guys take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Hey, come on. There you go. Oh. <laughs> you went up faster than I was hoping. All right, driving the dogs nuts. There you go, peace.